it's your friendly neighborhood immunologist, and today's video is about Guillain-Barre, the number one cause of acute flaccid paralysis. What that means is short-term muscle weakness or the inability to move your muscles. Even though there's only 3,000 to 6,000 cases a year, two-thirds of them, or 66%, are caused by one type of bacteria. I'm going to tell you what that bacteria is and how the immune response gets confused during this infection and targets your nerves, resulting in paralysis. So let's get started. So what's the most likely cause of Guillain-Barre? It's actually eating undercooked and contaminated chicken. It's contaminated with this purple bacteria here called Campylobacter jejuni. Now your immune system knows how to fight bacteria. So here comes one of your innate immune cells called the macrophage. The macrophage is a pretty powerful cell. They have receptors to identify bacteria and then to present bacteria. So it can come along, literally eat the bacteria, and break it down into small proteins. There we go, here's a small protein. The small protein doesn't do any good inside, so they actually place it on the outside of their body so that they can tell other immune cells what they have found. Now a macrophage can't just tell any old immune cell in the gut, probably where you ate the contaminated chicken, it needs to move. It needs to move where it can find other important immune cells called T cells here in blue. And then the B cell will come along in orange in just a minute. Now they had to travel to a lymph node. You have hundreds of lymph nodes located all around your body, your gut, your armpits, behind your knees, near your neck. And this is where your body holds your longest lived immune cells called B and T cells. Macrophages actually have no long-term memory of defeating the bacteria, but B cells and T cells can remember anywhere from one year to your entire lifetime what bacteria, viruses, and fungi they have encountered. So here we go. Macrophages run around looking for a matching T cell. This could take days, but here, boom, you got it. They matched. Now this T cell has been activated specifically for Campylobacter jejuni. The macrophage exits, and then the T cell has another job to do. T cells can fight bacteria and viruses both directly and indirectly. I'm making it activated. Um, so when they fight directly and indirectly, it's helpful, but it's best. The best case scenario is if they also find and activate a B cell, because B cells are the only cells in your body that make antibodies, those orange Y-shaped things I've drawn on the outside of the B cell. Okay, so here we go. They're a match. Again, this would take some period of time to find because um, you have millions of, of different B cells and T cells, but here we go. They're a match. Now the B cell can make antibodies against Campylobacter jejuni. Now, while this all seems good right now, ah, let's put it together. So here we have the macrophage coming back to fight more of these Campylobacter, but they've brought immune friends. So here we have the T cell will also fight with inflammation and the B cell will fight with antibodies. The antibodies will float out from the B cell and stick to the bacteria, making it very easy for the macrophage to pick up, eat and destroy the remaining bacteria. So that all seemed good. Where does it go wrong? It goes wrong one to three weeks afterwards. Here, I've drawn for you a nerve. Now, the nerve is beyond like the blood vessels, so the immune cells traffic past the blood nerve barrier. Here we have B cells, which have been activated, and we're gonna have T cells, which have been activated too. So they're gonna attack the nerve. They're gonna specifically attack the myelin made by the Schwann cells here that I drew in pink on the brown nerve. So why are their antibodies going there? All right, so we're gonna to have to zoom in to explain. Here I've drawn a phospholipid bilayer. That's what all of our cells are covered with. I just drew them as brown circles here. And I wanna point out this protein. Guess what? It's really, really similar to Campylobacter jejuni. It's so similar that the immune system can't tell them apart. Uh-huh, yeah, so that's actually called molecular mimicry. It's a terrible circumstance by which your immune system fights off an infection, but it looks so much like your body, one of your cells, that it continues to fight them. Yep, both B cells and T cells are confused and will both attack the nerve. All right, so remember what happens when there's antibodies? 
that means macrophages come along. The macrophage is going to come along, see the antibodies, and start to eat the Schwann cells, eat the myelin, break down those nerves. And without nerves, you can't move, all because of molecular mimicry. So that's why the most common treatment is actually removing antibodies through plasmapheresis. 